pay-per-view in the Thunderdome because next month we'll be in Fort Wayne, Texas for Money in the Bank. But first, we have to review a Judas edition of Hell in a Cell with some very interesting ending to matches, um, very long matches, and we are just still stuck in Groundhog's Day. So July 16th, yes, that is the SmackDown, cannot come soon enough. But we have to at least talk about Hell in a Cell, and I am here with my buddy to review things. It's Skylar. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be back. It's been a, a, a one pay per view. I've been going. <laughs> yeah, I had to review NXT all by myself. <laughs> you know what? It was a lot. <laughs> and that was a good time. NXT was good. I know. This I'm was so not. It. No. <laughs> So I'll talk a little bit about before Hell in a Cell. How excited were you? What were your expectations going in? Well, I was just upset because it's not in October around my birthday like it usually is. So it threw threw me off my little ritual of pay-per-views. Um, but I was kind of excited for the matches for some. Half of it, eh, the half, the other half, I was like, cool. Did not reach my expectations of what I thought. <laughs> But look at it like this, Extreme Rules, if they're going to have like the same horror theme that they had last year, that'll be around your birthday this year, so you'll get your little twist. Not the same. Hell in a Cell was my first pay-per-view ever I ever went to live, so it's not the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we got to start off with this pre-show that was based off what happened on Monday, because Mandy and Dana are all about photo shoots, Natty and Tamina are all about wrestling, so this was Mandy versus natty this match was fine nothing too spectacular i don't understand why it was a one-on-one -on -one and not a tag team match for the tag titles i don't know why we're waiting for that because now that mandy lost i really don't know what direction you're trying to go in because now you can't go on tomorrow and be like okay in a tag team title match because mandy lost like where's the momentum and the problem that we've had since the release is you have no more tag teams to go after these titles so i really don't understand what you're trying to do here unless you're going to try to make some makeshift tag teams i know i said in my nxc review this week that casey Carrizaro and Keenan carter that's a tag team mm -hmm. You could bring them up. I mean, they're totally not ready to be brought up, but that could be something. But you got to give me some tag teams to go after these titles. But other than that, this match was fine. Mandy's Mandy. Natty, of course, is just a teacher. It's true. I mean, this is a match I could totally see them just doing in Natty and TJ's little training facility that they have in their house, like with the ring. I could see like that being the makeshift. Like, this is a match you should look at to train how to be a wrestler. What did you think? Um, Mandy was as slow as ever, as per usual. And people on Twitter saying she's improved, you're wrong, because <sighs> Natalia has to slow down so much in that match. So back off. Um, I agree. I think, I don't know why they didn't do tag titles match. It just kind of like, uh, yeah, I agree. It's She lost, what are you going to do now? Like, who are you building up? Unless you... Swear to God, if they do Eva and, um, real, no, Piper. Sorry, I was thinking of her new name and I got mad. Oh, do you do? Um, Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's supposed to be something like a term for like a a bigger woman. Oh, okay. Yeah, but anyway, unless they do that, I'll be mad either way. But I don't think Natty or Tamina should lose the titles anytime soon like i understand why natty didn't lose because she's champion and they're actually doing something right in that way but they're doing it all of wrong. <sighs> oh you didn't yeah. you didn't see the rumor isn't the rumor that it's supposed to be Rhea versus piper and then piper's gonna give the title to eva you didn't see that my brain will be all over the roof i saw that <laughs> and i had to read it like three times i was like what why <laughs> I would be so mad because I love Piper. Piper should just be a solo act. Like she's so good on her own. The matches she had in UK, amazing. I'm still mad that they acted like they didn't know who that was. I, they're like, who? I'm like, bro, she signed under you in a different country. She's your brand. She's known. She's known from the indie days. Like, makes no sense. Treat these women fairly. Don't. It was 
next is gonna be Adam Cole coming up and he's gonna have a totally different name. They're gonna be like, who is that? Like he's not the most popular wrestler right now. Bro, don't scare me like that. That's my man behind dude, this dude. Anything could be possible. But one thing that did kick us off that was good was Bianca versus Bailey. I love the Cactus Jack tribute Bailey did that Skylar didn't even recognize, and she's usually the one to point out gear stuff to me. And I was like, look. I was really I was blind today. <laughs> I was really proud of myself. I'm like, wow, I'm on fire with this. Um, this match to me was the match of the night. I thought they hit on all cylinders. It's been proven since January just how great of chemistry they had. Um, Bianca's just improving, 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 and whatever is next for her. I know I talked about this on the prediction show because there's no woman on SmackDown, which just continues to be the problem. I'm assuming it's going to be Carmella just because she is the only one left, unless you're going to put Liv Morgan there. But Liv Morgan is my favorite to win the money in the bank. So I'm really hoping they don't put her in that position at that pay per view, which is also why I argue that the draft should not be after SummerSlam. The draft should literally be in two weeks because we need some switch ups. But other than that, this match was really good. And I'm thinking, based off some things that we happened after the match, we're looking at a heel turn from the EST of WWE. Um, hello. Um, I agree. This match definitely match of the night. Bailey and Bianca, always good at telling stories in a match. Especially, like, like Bailey's always been good at telling stories. So with Bianca doing it, now it's ooh. She's been so good at doing it every match she's done. Um, the hair tying, I love. I thought that was genius. I love when they put the hair in play because it is a disadvantage, but it can be an advantage to her. So I think that's beautifully done. Um, that um, kiss of death on the ladder, beautiful. So beautiful, so innovative. Never seen that before. And I can't wait to see if she does turn heel because I do love heel Bianca she's so sassy and I love it and I would if she is going heel though like I I don't it should be Liv against her like I know it's probably a slow burn so it probably will be Carmella but her against Liv would be so good they're both agile I need it that's why she needs to win money in the bank like that's all she needs I'm saying it right now that's my pick Pay-per-view is what, July 8th? The pay-per-view is July 18th. I'm calling it on June 20th at 11, 18 p.m. Liv Morgan is winning the woman's money in the bank. And when she does, I'm going to play this clip. I'm going to post on Twitter and be like, ha. Mine's going to be Sasha Banks as my pick. Ooh, okay, so we'll get into what we talked about before we started filming. So obviously the rumors that Becky was at the PC this week. Um, and I know you were joking with me when we get to the next match that Rollins looked really pale. And we were just like, he's been in Florida all week. Like, what has this man been doing? I guess, Ru- I don't think Rue likes being outside. I, I think they're being cautious. Even though they're probably vaccinated and everything, they, it, it's still hard for a baby, you know what I mean? She's six, she's turning seven months old in yeah, like a, two weeks. She a baby. Been, <laughs> she baby. <laughs> she tiny. Um, but... My beautiful prediction, and I kind of touched on this in the prediction show as well, Becky is going to return at the July 16th SmackDown. That is the first SmackDown where we have fans. Um, Long-term storytelling for me is that Becky enters herself in the money in the bank. She wins because if you remember, she had to sacrifice her title, and that's how Asuka won. The money in the bank match was for the title. That's when Becky announced it when she was pregnant. Um, Becky wins. Becky cashed in on Bianca, and that's the money in the bank match. Maybe Sasha comes in. Maybe Sasha returns at some point soon to make it a triple threat. And then you have Becky. Then you could have Becky pin Bianca, then Becky and Sasha, and that champions. Well, my thing is Sasha is going to come back, go into Money in the Bank, win it, because I think she it's her time to win the Money in the Bank because she is, a, she is heel right now. And that play on words with Sasha Banks, Money in the Bank, all that money, like perfect for her heel work. And then she will cash it in at some point. I'm still a little jet. I all I know is Becky's probably coming back in SummerSlam because SummerSlam's gonna be in a bigger arena and they want a bigger pop. Ninety thousand peeps. Exactly. I'm also like obviously we just said like oh Liv should win. 
these are what this is what I want this is what actually is going to happen <laughs> so in my heart I would love if like Liv Morgan does win oh, yeah. and everything I said is not going to happen but you know I could also see what I said happening as well but from there we go on to the man's husband and his first father's day because Woo! the losing streak is over he won <laughs> after months of losing oh my god it felt so good it was probably the best thing to happen to me all day but i'll have you start what did you think of the glorious win of several you're gonna hate me oh no well, not my favorite match between the two hey. I couldn't get into this match. I don't know what happened. It was a little off for me. I just was, I couldn't concentrate on it. I don't, I really don't know why, but it just wasn't, like, I'm glad he won. Like, I, he deserved a win. Feel bad for Cesaro because he needs to continue that momentum, but I don't think this is going to hold him back, hopefully. But, yeah, I just, I just, didn't feel it this time. I don't know if it's because like this is like the third, fourth time it's happening. So it kind of third time. It's the third time it's happening. It's just I get over I get bored with repetitive matches. So I think my thing was, and like this was a lot of matches were way too long. And like this is kind of the theme of me for the night. And I'll say it like with most matches, I felt like this was just a little too long. And a lot of things for me was like the breaks that they were taking between moves was a lot longer than they usually do, which is why to a lot of people the matches were harder to get into. Now, for me, I wanted Rollins to win because it's been so long since he's won, and they joked about it on commentary. Everyone was saying it on Twitter, all the pre-shows and stuff, that Rollins just hasn't won. So I'm like, if everyone's saying he's going to wrestle Edge at SummerSlam, he can't go into this losing. Now, the thing is, and I say three, but WWE wants you to think of two because they've been saying, oh, now we're even. And Rollins said at the end of the match, we're even. It's one to one. It's really two to one because everyone forgets retro SmackDown that Cesaro had to beat Rollins to wrestle Reigns at WrestleMania Backlash. Yeah. So, WWE, stop. I hate when you tell me to forget things, especially when it's my favorite wrestler. I'm not going to forget so one of the other guys was telling me like oh it's gonna be a best of three and i'm like don't you mean the best of five it's two to one no they're gonna make you forget about the retro smackdown match why do you do this i especially think this is going to lead to another match just because as i said the other match we're even it's one one rollins did win with a surprise roll up which is also the theme of the night because we saw it in the main event mm -hmm. so this is going to lead to another match because zara's going to be angry i would rather be on smackdown and not money in the bank i want rollins and zara to both enter the money in the bank match i think that's better for both of them or i could definitely see it being a qualifying match i could see rollins and cesaro and then rollins sadly losing again and me being very angry but i saw a lot of rumors that people want rollins to win the money in the bank this year so i'm just sitting there and i'm like what do you want people which is which i just need to know i don't know i mean i would Definitely love to see him repeat his heist of the century because the last time they were in Dallas, Rollins wasn't on the card. Rollins was sitting in the press box crying because he had a boo boo. Did you not see his W24? He was literally crying. His little, that one little tear wipe he does all the time. Long term storytelling, he was sitting next to Cesaro because Cesaro had his shoulder. <gasps> Oh my god. So the two best friends were injured together. So this is their first time competing in Dallas at at and Stadium. Well, and then they should just be in it both. Not as a match. That's way too no, long. No, no, no. In the main bank. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. But I see them doing it as a qualifying match. I don't know why. This is just my vision. And oh, I'll embrace the would. vision. Because they would. I bet you, for, I don't know if the qualifying match are starting tomorrow, like this week or next week, but I bet you, qualifying match, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro to end their feud. I'm going to throw a rematch. I'm going to throw my TV out the window because I'm like, oh, there goes Rollins. He's not going to be on the pay per view. <laughs> Unless he does one. Then I'll be really excited and I'll be like, yes. But from, I guess, one drip god to, um, I don't even know what to call this. Um, spider, hypnotist, 
isn't the, there's like a word right that you call like people who hypnotize people um um i was gonna say ventriloquist but that ain't it no it's stranger things 11 telekinesis yeah. no that's different it's moving stuff i don't watch stranger things you should it's good it's not scary my mom can watch it you can watch well, Taryn Terrell has been um, also recommending that I watch Handmaid's Tale, but I don't think I'm going to get into that because that's like very government political and I'm yeah. like, oh, nope. I don't know what to think of this because I'm very confused as to where this is leading. I booked three months ago that Shayna and Naya should break up and they're going to do it now, three months later when I booked the better storyline than, they than they're doing right now. I don't know if Reginald is now going to be with Alexa because they're not bringing Lily on the road. Yeah, I'm I heard that. I'm just really confused as to where this is going. I know a lot of people don't like this version of Alexa and everyone thinks it's gone way too far. And I see your point because I'm someone who loved Alexa from the beginning and I love the goddess and I loved all that. I convinced Skylar that she was good and Skylar's like, nope, I love this version of Alexa better. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> let's, let's compare here. She wrestled as the goddess. She's not wrestling as miss fiend well that's so, they're they're cautious of her because of her concussion history yes but now my fear is is that she's going to turn into the fiend 2.0 and every big match she's in she's gonna lose yeah but if she's telling a story it won't matter but the but bray wyatt's the biggest job in WWE. if you think about yeah, it but he's still entertaining and people miss him but he's a jobber that's why he's not believable He's really not, if you think about it, he's not believable because he loses every time they try to build him up. Like, does everyone forget he was in a title match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania 33 when he walked in as the WWE champion? Yes. Exactly. You forget about it because he's a jobber. <laughs> I love Bray Wyatt, but that's my fear with this, that we're going to build Alexa off the same exact way, and somehow this is going to lead her to get into the title picture with I don't know who, and then she's going to lose. And she's going to keep on losing. And then where are we going? I don't know. I just enjoy it. <laughs> this is the one thing I actually like in wrestling right now. And I oh. know it's probably because I'm very much into this creepy stuff. And I think it's just very different. And it's just, you never see women in this position. They had, like, they could have had multiple women and they haven't done that. This is like the first time. And I, Alexa plays it really well. And I don't think it's going away anytime soon. I think this is a perfect character for a, a while. Like if she goes back to the goddess, cool. I'm not gonna be entertained anymore. <laughs> but what's the payoff? She's gonna hold the title like this? Maybe she honestly she could. You know, I can see that happening. I can see different storylines happening. I can see her really getting into the minds of her opponents when she's going into the match to win it, and when she wins it, she keep playing mind games. It's story storytelling. Yes. It's good. Yes, I know. I'm a big storyline person, as I've been saying the whole yeah. time. But <laughs> I just don't understand what the payoff is. Like, I don't get, is Reginald going to turn on Naya and Shayna and go with Alexa? No. And Reginald is Naya, going to I think Naya, because the way she's been, she hypnotized her tonight, like, she actually got deep, like, everyone else looked away. She's the one that got deep into it. But Reginald on Monday, too, she did the same thing. And Reginald, yeah, Reginald was, like, deep into it. And Naya was like, what are you doing? Snap out of it. And he was still in it. So now I don't know, which is why I'm confused. <laughs> Isn't that good that we don't know? We've yes. been saying that it's been... too predictable. Yes. Isn't that good? It is, but I'd like to know where this is leading. Am I just going off into a far distance of Groundhog's Day or is something good going to come out the other side of the rainbow? I mean, I guess we're going to have to see when crowds come back. But I... I get booed. <laughs> She's going to get I... so booed. Oh, I don't know. It's a, I, there's a lot of other things that should get booed. I don't think this one should. As long as this guy gets cheered for once, I can live happily. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I, I have to see where this leads. Like, I don't want, like, here's my fear. I don't want to see it SummerSlam, Reginald and Alexa versus Diane and Shane in a tag team match. Oh, yeah, no. That's Reginald not what I want. not be a part of it anymore. <laughs> 
I love Re- Vince loves Reginald. As weird as that might sound, Vince loves him. Of course. He is so over. And like, he's been entertaining. I love Reginald with Carmella. I love him with Shayna and Naya. But like, my fear is that Reginald's going to go to Wittalaxa. And I don't want him to. I want him to wrestle in the men's division. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I like. I don't like. If it does come out to be like a horrible uh, uh, payoff, payoff. Thank you. In the future, I will admit it. I will be like, yeah, this fucking sucks. But for right now, I'm excited and it's not predictable, and I like that. I'm glad. You know what was really good and what didn't suck? Kevin Owens is Sam Zayn. Who can never put? I'm doing really good with these segues. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I'm learning from Jimmy. Yes, Jimmy. That I don't think they can put on a bad match, but I will say Owens looked weak as hell here. Oh, so bad. And I understand like Owens won at Mania, and Owens has been on a winning streak, and it's kind of like Rollins and like Zayn needed the win, but. Owen's got no momentum, and I get you were trying to pay off what happened on SmackDown with Commander Aziz, but, like, what was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. like, halfway through the match, I said, Owen is dead. That's what he looks like. He looks dead. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, lo- yeah, he was getting nothing out of that. Even when he was doing that, usually he lands that flip off the apron. He did not land that. I mean, kudos to Sammy. He took advantage of a situation. He finally won a match. I it ended. I was like, I was not expecting that. Zane's <laughs> also won <laughs> too. Very crazy man won, and I'm very happy. Zane's another one who you could argue in his main roster run, his little keeping a jobber. Yeah. So I was very happy. <laughs> oh, he needed it. But my thing is, and I don't think this feud will ever get stale. It won't because they've just wrestled so many times and every match they watch is different. I don't think you could put two matches together that two of them have wrestled and it's been the same. But if this is going to go to a best of seven, I want this to at least lead somewhere. And I want to lead it to Reigns. But I feel like since we buried Owens and Reigns into the ground, that it has to be Zayn. And I feel like, like, I like that idea. But then I'm like, Ooh. But then I'm like the, but then I'm like the promos. Then I'm like, ooh. Like we know Sammy ain't gonna win, but it'd be a great match because I don't think we've ever seen that before, have we? No. No. Ooh. Someone just needs to hire me for creative. No, Kimmy, I need you there. Hey, they've been hiring people. I know a couple people on Twitter that have been hired like the last couple weeks for writing. And I'm like, hi, can you please watch my show? <laughs> I book your show way better than you do. You gotta turn 20 first, hon. Huh? You got you gotta you got two a months. month, two months. Yeah, but that it needs a payoff. Like if the yeah. if they're gonna do like a best of seven like they did with Seamus and Cesaro 15 million years ago, but don't turn them into a tag team and just like the winner of the match gets a title shot at Reigns. That could be your Clash of Champions match. Or, and the final match could be at SummerSlam. Or one of them wins the pay, uh, Money in the Bank. Another qualifying match. Is your qualifying matches. Sammy gets in. Sammy wins. Oh. Oh. I know. But can you imagine him winning it? Can you imagine walking around with that briefcase every Friday? Him, him on talking to Kayla? Kayla, I told you the conspiracies, and now everything is working out in my favor. He won tonight. He's going to keep this winning streak because that can, because it, he won clean. He did win clean. It's not like he didn't win clean. He actually won clean. He didn't, he didn't try to cheat. He busted his lip. Something. Yeah. Everything, can, dude. Are we finally getting like a Sami Zayn, like actually good championship soon? Oh my god, and then he could end 2021 by saying the conspiracies were done in my favor. And they could release the documentary, and the documentary ends with him like raising some type of title. <laughs> the it's, end. A whole, it's like a whole chronicles or like a 24, like it's been a whole 24 um documentary. <laughs> Please. Dude. That's- that's what I need in my life. I need more Sammy. I'm a huge Sammy Zayn fan. That's that's just what I need. This is the be- 
the crowd's gonna go wild when his music comes out. See, Sammy's one who's gonna get cheered when fans come back. Yeah. Alexa won't. I mean, this guy won't either. But oh. and from oh, I can't do a good segue there. Oh, I can. Um, speaking of DQ finishes and not winning clean. This is my issue. Why do we do DQ p- finishes on a pay-per-view? Why, when they had this beatdown on Monday, was this not a Hell in a Cell match? You usually do three. You took one away. You added one. Hello, where was my third one? Hello, why was Ronald Cesaro not in a Hell in a Cell match either? Why did this match not happen? I swear to God. What did I say at WrestleMania Backlash when we did this? Ronald and Cesaro is going to be in a Hell in a Cell match. Guess what? Didn't happen. (laughs) Bullshit. I so, predicted this. I predicted this ending too. I looked straight at my mom. I said, "Oh, this is ending DQ or no or no no contest." And look what happened. I'm so mad. So I, this match was really long. I yeah. the WrestleMania 36 match was better. Mm-hmm. I don't know what was off, but this was just. <laughs> I don't know if we're trying to turn Rhea heel and Charlotte face. Well, they had both. I've, all the sound and audience boo at both of them. That's <laughs> what are we doing here? God dang it. Stop it. I don't I'm think so they mad. know. They don't. Because I think what they're trying to do. Remember when we were watching Double or Nothing and we said if Jungle Boy wins the Casino Battle Royal, they're listening to the fans. Yeah. I think they're attempting to do the same thing and they're trying to predict who people are going to boo and cheer. But the thing about AEW is they kind of know who people like and don't like. With WWE, they don't know that. Because for years, they've always gotten fan reactions wrong and that's why people want to start riots at their live shows. So I think what they're attempting to do is figure out if Charlotte's going to get cheered. But like... My thing is, Charlotte, like, I feel like people have seen a new light of Charlotte since Andrade signed with AEW, because on his first indie show, Charlotte was there, and people are saying when Charlotte's contract gets, like, done, she should go to AEW with Andrade, because she's done all she could in WWE. The only thing she hasn't done is one money in the bank. And the, tag, existence. and the tag titles. Oh, no, she did. Yeah, so the only thing she hasn't done is money in the bank. But I don't think she's ever... I mean, she could. She won't because of Rick. Yeah. But that's I what people don't. have been saying. She should leave. I mean, I think it would be good. going to If she goes to another promotion, she's getting cheered there. I don't think she's getting cheered in WWE right now. Because she's actually playing a really good heel. Like, I'm even annoyed with her. I mean, aren't we always annoyed with her? Yeah, but there's times I'm like, cool. Like, I like this Charlotte character. This character, I'm actually like, uh, shut up. (laughs) But yeah, no, I'm, I like, this match is just, I thought they were going to go, because they were going for the knee again. I was like, oh, it's going to be another uh, WrestleMania again. Like, they're going to have Charlotte win again. But they didn't. I was happy. Like, but, but since when was the table illegal? I don't see that's what I'm saying too. Where People get thrown illegal? in the announce table all the time. Yeah, you get head banged. You get like, when is that illegal? WWE, every year, every time you do Hell in a Cell, you figure out what's illegal and not. You know what they're going to do? They're going to have the first woman title ladder match of Money in the Bank. They haven't had one? No. They've only done a Money in the Bank. They never had a uh, ladder match for a title. That's what they're going to do, and they're going to put Nikki in it. Or, or what they're also going to do is Charlotte's going to pin Nikki. Because they've been throwing Nikki into this. Yeah. And so they could turn this around and be like, you, you've, you've always been us with like some type of distraction or like with the beat the clock challenges, you never pinned us. So now we're going to make it. A tri- so Adam Pierce can be like, oh, we're going to make it a triple threat match. And Nikki's going to get pinned. Yeah. Hopefully by Rhea. Yeah, so it's either this triple threat or this ladder match. It's and one of those two. We're going to go back to Charlotte because she never looked, got pinned again. Um, I think they should keep the ladder match for TLC. I can do that. I think that would be a better way to put it in. 
because that's just more normalized. Because I don't think they, I think they only want the two ladder matches at the main bank. Um, yeah, I was just trying to let fit and flow. I know they're not gonna flow. <laughs> no, and the the main event didn't flow. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, this okay. So I said all week. If Drew wins, I don't know what's going to happen because here was my thing. If Drew wins, this stipulation is in a two-way street. That doesn't mean that Bobby doesn't get the challenge for the title again. We're back to square one. So um, Rob was wrong because Rob, this was the podcast. Rob was like, I want Drew to win. I said, are you, before he even explanation, are you kidding me? I was like, what? And then he just started going. And then I was like, you're wrong. Here's why. Gave him all my reasons. Now I'm very happy to say he was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Rob. This home. Oh, so I like the use of the weapons here more than mm-hmm. the woman. I thought they utilized it more. I think Drew's welt showed very much to show how much he was battling. I thought the ref spot was creative. I thought MVP getting locked inside the cage was also creative too, because mm-hmm. that was a good way to use him um, and him be like, I'm trying to get out. And he's like, oh my God, I'm locked in here. What the hell? But I don't like small point rent pin up roll up the end. Why? What? Just why? There's no answer. It's just what we've been questioning for the last year. Did you like this match? No. <laughs> Cause I was so scared Drew was gonna win. Because I was like, they're going to want him as with the crowds, like as champion. But I was like, we're going to be a full circle again. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I will literally not watch wrestling anymore if this happened. Oh, no. But I may be a little dramatic, guys. I'm, I'm a little dramatic, but I get my point across. <laughs> but, yeah, I was like, I do like the use of, like, I got more into it when the ref got knocked out. Because <laughs> I think that's more spontaneous. I just... Yeah, no, I'm just glad Bobby won. We're out. Hopefully, we're out of the woods. I don't know who he's going to verse next, but all I know is we're out of the woods. Hopefully, they've been building it up because every week. Well, no, because they've MVP's been like smack talking Kofi for the past three weeks. True. And MVP is just like, you know, where, where. Imagine Kofi wins. Imagine. That would be really long-term storytelling. And then MVP turns on Bobby and goes with Kofi. <laughs> and he gets rid of, and Kofi turns heel and gets rid of Xavier. But th- there's a problem, though. Because Brock's coming back for SummerSlam. <laughs> no! So that, so that can't happen, because then we'd be back to that SmackDown debut on Fox when Kofi lost in the, what was it, 18, 12 okay. seconds? Forget my plan. Everyone forget my creative idea. That's out of the way. We're waiting until Brock's gone. <laughs> no, okay. So if Brock was not coming back and that was not the plan, I would 100% support that because I believe yeah. that Kofi and Xavier are going to split up. And I think, so I don't think they're going to like split up, split up. I think Kofi's going to go one way and Xavier's going to go another because I think they're going to bring back King of the Ring. I think <laughs> I think that's their plan because they've been hyping it up since the whole crown thing with Baron and Shinsuke. Yeah. And then on Xavier Woods' Twitter, he officially, yeah. unofficially announced himself in the tournament and goes, well, people in the Royal Rumble do this, so I'm going to do this and hope it leads me somewhere. So I'm like, okay, if he's tweeting this, this is leading to something. And there was a rumor earlier this week, I forgot who said it, that um, WWE is trying to do more theme shows. And yes. King of the Ring was mentioned as one. So I'm assuming, I don't know when we're going to do it. We get King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring. But uh, it's not going to be a pay-per-view. No, but even just on the show, we get a Queen of the Ring finally. Yeah. I mean, you have to have enough women on your show to do said thing. Yeah. But you know what they, ooh, they could do it in Survivor Series. Really? Because if it's going to be Raw and SmackDown both participating and you have your Raw winner and your SmackDown winner on both, yes. it would only make sense to do it Survivor Series. Yes. And then that could actually count as like what brand is better. It and the be Baron versus Xavier in the finals because Baron's probably going to win to def- to defend his throne. 
Did you not watch SmackDown? He's not king anymore. Shinsuke is. Oh, he is? I don't know. I didn't watch. <laughs> Shinsuke won the crown. <laughs> Everything else except for that. Yeah, Shinsuke won the crown. So Baron's not king anymore. So oh, you're so saying. Usually... I didn't know they had a stipulation. No one said that on Twitter. What the hell, Twitter? You're behind. <laughs> That's yeah, behind. The thing said, um, whoever wins is going to be the new king. And and then, like, Eric Boone. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I did not do research like normal. <laughs> Wow, even Scott knew more than you. Because Scott's been watching SmackDown with me every week. And Scott was like, oh my god, we're finally getting this match for the crown. He was so excited. I've been working. I mean, Scott. Scott's trying to learn every day. Scott, Scott still doesn't understand how everyone's related to The Rock. Ooh, He's like, sweet Scott. Scott's like, wait, this person's related to The Rock? I go, yeah. He's like, and this person? I go, yeah. And he's like, I don't know. Every Samoan. Yes, but then he was trying to tell me Samoa Joe was related to The Rock, and I go, no, not that one. No, 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 no. I don't think he's Samoan. <laughs> no. Okay, he is. He's like heritage of Samoa, but he was born in California, where The Rock was born in Hawaii. Yeah. I had to look this up and show him. For those who don't know, Scott's my neighbor who lives down the block from me, and I've been trying to get him on this wrestling thing for, like, months and he's been like he's been watching me every week and he just laughs at Rollins beats up every week new new wrestling buddy can we well he liked okay so so I know a couple weeks ago when they did the mysterious versus the Usos he got really into that he likes the Usos he's and he okay. likes Dominic he doesn't like Ray he only likes Dominic <laughs> oh he's he definitely is a new fan <laughs> he made that same he a new fan I don't think he likes Rollins, though. But I think he has to like Rollins because he's friends with me. And I'm just sit there and I'm like, look. <laughs> this poor kid. Ooh. See, my, my plan was, I should have done my Hell in a Cell predictions with him since he's been watching SmackDown. He, like, knows. <laughs> He'll maybe, be on one day. Maybe Money in the Bank. I'll do my predictions to him. I'll be like, Scott, I'm just going to explain everything to you and we're going to do our predictions. Ready? Yes. Oh my god. And then he's gonna watch Bayroom and he's gonna be like, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> or fun. Scott. Actually, wait, is Scott gonna be back from Aruba? I think Scott's gonna be back from Aruba for Money in the Bank. Ooh. But he'll be back that weekend, so I can't do my mm, unless I shoot no, I can't do my British and family because we'll be in Aruba. They'll be out of the country. SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Who's if so, Summer Slam is the day before his birthday. No, two days before his birthday. It was on his birthday last year, and I had to watch it at his birthday dinner. It, is it after your birthday? Yes, it's okay. the it's six days after. But it's Scott's birthday dinner. I was sitting there on my phone like this, and Scott's like, what are you doing? I'm like, shh. And I was watching all this match in the car. <laughs> and he was like, what's happening? I'm like, just shut up. Wait. Let it happen. And then Scott's mom was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, hold on. I'm like, oh, Rollins won. All right. Happy birthday, Scott. 18. <laughs> so on a scale of 1 to 10, where do we rate this last Hebrew with fans? I give it a 6. You're being nice. <laughs> I'm always nice. I always give jo- better. Of the- anyway. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh. Um, window, window shut down. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five and a half. Yeah, I'm very mad at the DQ. Um, a lot of the matches were very long, in my opinion. Please, we need a refresh. I've been saying this for months. This, this draft needs to happen yesterday. Why it didn't happen yet, I don't know. They're waiting for fans. Everything they've been pushing back is because of fans. And now that we're back, we're taking over. Yes, but then my thing is, what's going to be the next excuse when nothing changes? They're waiting for the draft? What happens after the draft? Oh, they're waiting for Mania? We're going to get the Mania. We we're riot. Gonna do- we literally take pitchforks and fire and we riot. We're we go general. to the, the, the new... Um, I can't think of words to say. What are you trying to say? WWE headquarters. Going to go to HQ in Connecticut? I don't think they're in Connecticut anymore. That's why I'm like, go to the new one wherever there are. No, they're in Connecticut. Are they they moved to it. Yes. There's an office in Connecticut. There's an office in LA. Oh, I thought they moved out of Connecticut. No. Anyway, 
we're still writing because it's bullshit if they just can't get it right. Vince needs to leave at that point or just take care of the money. Have hey, Vince knows he, Vince knows his product's been set, been stale. He admitted it. And what is he doing? We're doing stuff an hour before the show. Nobody said he was a smart man. Not in creative. He needs to leave creative. I don't care. It's your business. You have to leave. Yes. You'll have my resume in two days. Kimmy has been banging this shit out. Get your shit together. So I can actually watch every week. I watch every week. Dude, I if I want to get my channel started, I got to start watching it. I'm so, I can't, I do not. Hey, have... just think, you're making your debut on the No Holds Bar Network. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Sky. And I'm... Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> hi, Jeff. Come what meet you. Hi, I'm 1.3 thousand people. <laughs> like my little rant? <laughs> Where can we find you, my daughter? Hey, let me see. Um, it's gonna be my Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Skylar under dashes, bunch of under dashes. Nicole. Um, one day my YouTube channel will be out. I've been saying this for almost a year now. One day. Um, you can do it. I, All right. I need motivation. Do it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Now I have to go over my laundry list of things. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I felt so bad. When I did the predictions, they made me say arm bar in between each one to be like the thousand holds. Yes! And I'm I was so like, happy they did. I'm like, you know what? I ain't Jericho. All right, we're gonna start off simple and then we're gonna get more complex. This is how I do this. All right, so Instagram. Kimmy Talks Wrestling, Twitter, Kimmy underscore Sokol. You can obviously see me here on No Holds Bar Network. I do Raw, I do NXT, I do SmackDown, I do Pay-Per-Views. I am your WWE person. And starting this week, now the Dark Side of the Ring is over and the China Dock, which was very sad and very emotional. And if you're going to watch it, oh my God, it is really good though. It's yes. sad, but really good. Um, so Impact Reviews will be starting. Um, we have Slammiversary. So funny. So literally, it's um, that's SmackDown, where fans return. Slammiversary and the money in the bank. A lot of wrestling. And I believe the 17th, I'm working with Velvet Sky. So I'm a B. Well, um, virtual. Oh, uh, because I'm working at July 17th show with Kevin. Or not oh, show, God. but with Kevin. Oh, but I don't have to leave my house. I do. I had to stay here, but I'm kind of excited for that. So yay. Um, all right, so we'll go into virtuals anyway, because we're talking about it. Um, this Friday on East Coast Autograph Auctions Facebook, we have the recently released NXT superstar Vanessa Bourne. Also, if you are in the New York area, you can head to the Wrestling Universe in Queens. She will be there along with former WWE Divas champion Eve Torres. And also at 7 o'clock, Eve Torres will be doing a virtual signing at... East Coast Autograph Auctions on Facebook. We also have some really cool ones coming up in the next couple weeks. We have Anna J. We have Velvet Sky, like I just mentioned. Mass and Rain. Um, there's a bunch of people coming up as well. I'm actually booked every weekend starting after July 10th until my birthday in August, which is really scary. And my bosses at camp looked at me with five heads yesterday when I told them this piece of information. All right. Armbar next. Um... <laughs> Other places you can find me, thepopbreak.com. I'm writing a bunch of reviews there for Ring of Honor stuff. I'll be writing my review on the Stone Cold Steve Austin Broker School Sessions with Mick Foley. So, yeah, doing oh that. <laughs> um, Armbar, Ring of Honor. Hi, if on Wednesdays on YouTube, head to Ring of Honor's YouTube channel. If you're not watching Women's Division Wednesdays, what the hell are you doing? Like, come on, peeps. We're starting our it's tournament together. soon. Um, also, Ring of Honor, if you have not seen over at my YouTube channel, Kimmy Talks Wrestling, I'm doing wrestling with questions. I am sitting down with most of the competitors for that tournament. I recently interviewed Amy Rose and find out why is she looking at Max the Impaler out of all people to manage going into this tournament. Armbar, 
theopenmat.com. That is my internship. I am, depending on what the diamond mind is, might be running an article about that. Might be reviewing, might be previewing other teams' wrestling seasons. What am I going to do? Um, I don't, am I missing something? I see, I forget. Probably. Um, I said this. Oh, also, hey, oh, the only podcast is today. <laughs> Watch Kyle and Tiff review AEW. <laughs> That's at three o'clock on this channel. Um, I don't think. Oh, you can also catch me on the BCP doing some things. I mean, not anytime soon because the next paper is not till the middle of July. But see me over there too. And I think that's it. I don't think I forgot everything. I really need to write it down. Yes. Because I forgot. Okay, I forgot Richie on the NXT panel. So I forgot to do that. And I feel like I'm forgetting something here. So I'm going to write it down. I am sorry. I run out of things. She's a busy working independent woman. Um, on top on top of camp. Yes. Uh, camp oh. is starting in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So as a full-time camp counselor, I will be also bringing you all of that content. She's working this hard for you guys. Better watch. Better subscribe. If you don't, Putting this girl through hell for nothing. Do it. I mean, my hell is not here. My hell is um the other place. <laughs> my hell the camp. Oh. Rip. But that's it for us. Catch me tomorrow in reviewing Monday Night Raw, and hopefully it's been better than it has been the last couple weeks. But make sure to stay here and do all that stuff and watch the AEP at three o'clock. This is going to be the second to last one that is not on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. So be there, tune in. And also, I'll promote something else for Kyle. World of Wrestling, his EFED on Twitch. Something might be happening at the pay view July 2nd. What is happening? I may or may not know, but you're going to have to tune in. And for now, I do adieu. Goodbye, good night, peace, bang. Kyle, be proud of me. I did that for you. Boom.